Hello, Stillwater, our old friend. We made a lot of memories here over the last several years, but it's been a while since our last visit to this gymnasium. But we're ready to make a return trip to the stable at Oak Park Heights for a Suburban East battle with key implications in Section 4-4A seating. The Stillwater Ponies and White Bear Lake Area Bears engage once more in the second of two conference meetings, identical records at 16-3, and, and if recent history is any indication, expect another photo finish. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Beaton. Here I am all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. Stillwater and White Bear Lake met last year in the Section 4 4 a final. White Bear Lake won that one. It was a close battle, much like these meetings over the last couple of years en route to a bronze medal in Class 4A. Every indication suggests these two will be in the picture. Both of them are chasing Eastridge in the conference and section standings. But if White Bear Lake can pull off the sweep tonight, they beat Stillwater in the first meeting, 76-69, it would likely guarantee them a two seed. And what that would mean, given the playoff implications, they would at least get to host the first two rounds. The finals are still played at Hastings, a neutral site. White Bear Lake, last year, most of their offense ran through Lauren Eckerly and Navea Hughes. Both of them are in college, but a new leader has emerged in the junior, Jordan Schmidt deal. She has four 20 point games, including 21 in the first meeting of this series, helping the Bears knock off the ponies. But you also have plenty of role players. Jeremy Post, the head coach says, I effectively have six starters. Heidi Barber is the player that comes off the bench, but she can fill in multiple positions and he feels that White Bear Lake is a more balanced unit than last time. He says the Bears, much like the first meeting, will need to get an early jump. That's what they did, leading by 11 at halftime and holding off Stillwater to get the win in the first meeting. Speaking of the Ponies, they look a little different than the years of Sarah Scalia, Alexis Pratt, and Liza Carlin, but they have a lot of players who can put up points. Leading the way is Amy Thompson. Eight 20-point games this season, including four in a row. The junior has evolved considerably since she first suited up for the Ponies a couple years ago. Lexi Carlin, the lone senior in this group, she's had to do UMD, has three 20-point games, representing the leadership that could help Stillwater get back to the state tournament couple of other players to keep an eye on, Liana Buckhalton and Elise Dieterle. This Ponies team may not draw the headlines they did in the years of Sarah Scalia and Alexis Pratt, but they remain a competitive force. They have several key wins, including a recent one over Rosemount. Tim Pepper, the head coach, said, we're trying to shore up our defense as we begin the final month of the regular season. We'll find out who comes out on top as the Bears try to get a sweep and Stillwater tries to get a split and keep pace with Eastridge for first place in the Suburban East. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. That put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the stable at Oak Park Heights. With the 16 and three Stillwater Ponies and the 16 and three White Bear Lake Area Bears. As we stand in the open, Eastridge leading the conference and the section. The Raptors undefeated in conference play. Stillwater and White Bear Lake with two losses in the Suburban East. Stillwater lost to White Bear Lake and Eastridge, the Bears, losing to Eastridge in the first meeting, and Roseville. And forward to six foot junior, number 24, Jordan Schmidtfield. 
Coach of the Bears, Jeremy Coates. Now let's meet the starters for our still under As the starters are being introduced, balance defining both sides. Stillwater has more players in double digits for scoring with Carlin Thompson and Buck Halton. White Bear Lake has just the one in Schmidt deal, but Heidi Barber, she averages 9.2 coming off the bench. Abby O'Brien can chip in a few points. Same with Blessing out of BC. White Bear Lake historically, not a team that prefers relying on one player to get the job done. That's never been their style. But they're a well-coached group and they usually find a way to get in the conversation come postseason time. The starters for tonight. For White Bear Lake, it's Kenny Bachmeyer, number four. Addison Post, number five. Blessing out of EC, number 11. Abby O'Brien, number 14. And Jordan Schmidt deal, number 24. Stillwater will start. Liana Buckhalton, number three. Annika Pepper, number five. Amy Thompson, number 12. Elise Dieterle, number 13. And Lexi Carlin, number 42. Lots of memories here, Sarah Scalia, Alexis Pratt, Liza Carlin, the big three that brought Stillwater to a couple of state tournaments. And the Ponies would love to get back in the big dance. White Bear Lake and Stillwater moving into the top 10 in this week's poll for Class 4A, nine and 10 respectively. which tells you how well these two programs have conducted themselves. They may not be the front runners like Hopkins or St. Michael Aberville or Chaska in Class 4A, but after Providence Academy pulled off that surprising win over Hopkins, there is a sense as Addison Post missed the 14-footer. Offensive rebound for the Bears. No shot clock here. Kenny Bachmeyer doesn't need one though, the drill to three. But with Hopkins losing to Providence Academy last week, that could create a path for the other 4A teams. Buck Halton almost lost the handle. Finds Lexi Carlin, the lefty, who drives and gets the friendly bounce. Lexi, the younger sister of Liza. Liza in her junior year at Marquette. Lexi, as we stand in the open, going to Minnesota Duluth. Side fade, kick out, three on the way. Not that time for Bachmeyer. And the rebound to Buck Alton. Going outlet, and she finds Elise dearly for two. That gives the Ponies an early 4-3 lead. Again, based on the season series over the last couple of years, a photo finish is not out of the question. Last year, these two played it close. And it wouldn't be surprising to have another trio of meetings as Blessing out of BC flips in the bucket. Given how the section is playing out, it's possible. Buck Halton with a hesitation move 360 and the finish. If Eastridge holds, Stillwater and White Bear Lake would be the two and three seed. Here's the driving kick, three no good. And that would mean these two would meet in the section semifinal. Lexi Carlin foul. We mentioned she's a left-hander. She didn't start that way. As she goes to the line. Lexi used to shoot with her right hand and then through training sessions with her father, she started using her left hand. And over time, that became her dominant hand. So a Southpaw who knocks down both free throws and Stillwater with an early 8-5 lead. Adebisi with a bounce pass to Schmidt deal. Layup too strong, rebound Carlin.
Buck Halton at the key. Spin move, pulls up. Can't get the bounce. Rebound, put back, plus the foul. Lexi Carlin off to a sizzling start. Lexi, a two-sport athlete, much like her big sister. The one difference is Liza took up swimming. Lexi took up volleyball here at Stillwater. A little more dry, I suppose. No three-point play, but Stillwater does lead 10-5. Out of BC. Finds Addison Post, got a little bit of space in the push off. Nothing there, so here comes Bachmeyer. Lane cut off, out of BC from 14, no good. Dieterle with the rebound. Thompson, hand off to Buck Alton. Looking for the high low play to Dieterle, Dieterle, broken up. There's Thompson, came over from Matamidi. Carlin. Fakes the three, recovers. Now Buck Alton from the corner, yes! Buck Alton for three. 13 to five, Stillwater getting the early jump in this game. Foul away from the ball, it will go against Pepper. And here comes Heidi Barber, again, averaging over nine points off the bench and highly versatile. Eight point game. White Bear Lake looked a little disorganized on that set, so Jeremy Post, the longtime head coach, will use a timeout here. 14.03 left in the first half. Stillwater with an eight point lead, but a long way to go as we begin the final month of the regular season. And looking ahead for Stillwater, a four game win streak. They have one more non-conference game with Holy Angels a week from Saturday. What should be a good test for them? They're coming off for a runaway win over Como Park. That group is rebuilding. And the Bears have won six straight as they continue the second leg of conference play. They are off until the 10th when they host Eastridge. That could be a crucial game. It was White Bear Lake who pulled off the upset over Eastridge in the section semis last year that helped them on their path to a bronze medal. It was a great year for the Suburban East actually. Entry pass deflected and intercepted. Roseville and White Bear Lake both reaching the semis that year. Will that happen again this year? Hard to say. Carlin from 15, that did everything but go in. Jordan Schmidt deal with the rebound. Through the hole, up, no good. Acrobatic move, just couldn't get the finish. Schmidt deal off to a slow start here, but she usually finds a way to get her points. Carlin, looking for a seam, doesn't find one, and she'll go out to Buck Alden. Now Carlin again, the fadeaway is good. Barber about the same height as Carlin, but Lexi is feeling it. Post on the take, no good. And Stillwater with a chance to extend their lead. Thompson gets the space, Carlin throws it up and in. Lexi Carlin can do no wrong. And she's got 10 points. Carlin. Also a member of the Stillwater National Honor Society. Three 20 point games this season. Maybe not as explosive as Liza was at Central and Stillwater, but still an integral part of the Stillwater program the last couple of years. A 
And the Bears running into some headwinds here, but don't count them out just yet. That being said, the more Stillwater can grow their lead, the more they can set the tone. And that could spell trouble for the Bears. Stillwater does have the edge on offense, averaging 68 points per game. Carlin went across, came up short. Thompson, no good. And Addison Post wins the scrum for the rebound. And Carlin getting it done on the defensive end now. Eleven thirty-four left in the first half. Ponies lead 18 to five. Catch and shoot three, comes up short. Rebound Buckholt. Thompson. That's Schaefer, Carlin, the hot hand for the Ponies. Cut off there, quick triangle. Now it's Peyton Schaefer who goes across. Those fadeaways going across are difficult shots to make. And I seem to be drawing attention up here. Adebisi, three is short. Addison Post caught it. Goes underneath and drains the reverse. Let's see if that awakens White Bear Lake. Sometimes all you need is just for that first one to go in. And the Bears, one of those programs as Stillwater goes high low to Peyton Schaefer. The Bears, one of those programs that typically gets more out of their roster than you might think. And that's what makes them so tough in the conference and the section. Schaefer called for the foul. But Stillwater looking pretty spry here as they lead 20 to seven with 10.23 left in the first half. Kami Bachmeyer hands it off to Wallach, thought about a three. Now they take one, that goes off the heel. Ball last touched by Stillwater. Bounce pass, ball fake. There's Schmidt deal. If she can get going, that would really help the Bears and she'll go to the line for two. That's one way to do it. Like we said, Jordan Schmidt deal usually finds a way to get involved even if she has a slow start. One of the consistent presences for White Bear Lake. And as she gets her first point, a soccer basketball crossover. Her club soccer team took second in the nation last season. One of those multi-sport prodigies. Here's a three for the Ponies, count it. We also had a foul. So Amy Thompson gets the three. Who's the foul on? The foul, it's an offensive foul on Peyton Schaefer. So the three counts because the shot was released before the foul was called. It doesn't happen often, but in that instance, you count the basket, but a foul on Schaefer. Twenty-three nine, Ponies getting the turnover. Thompson got on the board with that last triple. Buck Halton side fade. White Bear Lake, Wallach got a piece of it. 
And they do get the stop. Schmidt deal on the dribble drive. Doesn't have the opening to attack. Mike Bear Lake looking to move inside. Adebisi sealed off by Carlin. 8.55 to go in the first half. Pepper. Stillwater moving inside to Carlin. Stayed on the pivot. Almost coughed it up though. Here's Pepper. She sees Elaine, goes for it, and will shoot two. Stillwater looking a tad quicker right now than White Bear Lake, but as we said before, these two teams have a history of close battles over the last couple of years, so I'm not ready to proclaim anyone the winner just yet. Pepper averaging 6.2 points per game for the Ponies. Filled in last year when Amber Scalia was recovering from a hand injury and did quite well. And she played her way to a starting spot. She is the daughter of Stillwater head coach Tim Pepper, who has a lot of basketball experience. Both Pepper and Post involved in AAU. Post with the Minnesota Stars, Pepper with Minnesota Fury. Here's Bachmeyer in trouble. We've got a tie up. Stillwater with the arrow. As White Bear Lake was building their way back up, We were here a few years ago when the Ponies, they lost to White Bear Lake in the first meeting. In the second meeting here, they were up 50 to seven at halftime. I don't think we're going to see that huge a discrepancy, but a wild swing, a game I won't forget easily. Bears get another stop. Can they find a way to turn it into points? They'll try the three and rattling it in is Heidi Barber. Barber, 24-12. Ponies swing it around. This is Pepper through the hole. Adebisi got the block. Pepper came up with it. Adebisi with the steal as Pepper tried to bounce her way out of trouble. Blessing out of EC, one of those X factors. Pump fake, long two. It looked like Abby O'Brien jittered just a little bit. Stillwater tried to go high low in transition. Out of EC, careless pass, but Stillwater throws it right back to White Bear Lake. And after that round of hot potato, the Bears will try to settle in and pick up some momentum. Barber off the screen, another three, yes! Timeout, Ponies. I think we can pull out just a touch, or right about there, I think. Because I've got that wide shot, or that hero cam next to you. 24-15, back-to-back threes for Heidi Barber. 6.38 to go in the first half. And now the Bears finding that momentum we were talking about. Heidi Barber, the junior, plays quarterback on the football team at White Bear Lake. She was a backup, softball, football, and basketball. and. I don't think it was too hard to get support to play football because one of the assistant coaches on the football team at White Bear Lake is Jeremy Post. But Heidi Barber, Kendall Stadden from Blaine comes to mind, part of this growing wave of female athletes suiting up for football. Carlin. Tough pass, but getting the bounce is Peyton Schaefer 
There was not much room to work with. It was one of those shoulder passes. But a much needed score for the Ponies on the ATO. White Bear Lake goes high low. Schmidt deal. Needed a moment to collect herself. Also the Ponies number three, Lee Buckhalton. Her second. Jordan Schmidt deal shoots two. So Schmidt deal back to the line. No field goals yet. But she has become a remarkable player for White Bear Lake. Left that one short, but Anabisi got the rebound. She's gonna try to muscle her way inside originally. That didn't work out. Back outside they go. Anabisi, one on one. Having a tough time getting around Stillwater's interior defenders tonight. She has just the one field goal, another tie up. And this time the arrow belongs to White Bear Lake. Bears go around. High low, Adebisi, tough catch. The kick out, Schmidt deal for three off the heel. 26-16, 10-point game. Buck Halton finds a cutting Carlin, who tried to sneak past out of BC. She'll go for the fadeaway instead and get the friendly bounce. Carlin making all the tough plays tonight. Post to Schmidt deal, driving kick to Abby O'Brien. Out of BC again. Still can't find room in the interior. Here's Barber. Lost the handle. Stillwater will scoop it up. Carlin to Buck Alton. Dieterle beat her coverage, needed a moment. That should say that's Schaefer. But the same principle still applies. She beat her coverage, needed a moment, but laid it in. Schaefer with six. Adebisi can't hit the three. And a foul on the Ponies. They had one to give with 4.14 left in the first half. number 12, Amy Thompson. First Just the first on Amy Thompson. For Abby Bachmeyer, number 30, Eva Post in for the Bears. Five on Amy Pepper in for the Bulls. Barber wanted the three. Finds Schmidt deal. Tough shot. Stillwater doing a good job thus far. Keeping an eye on Schmidt deal. Thompson, another three. Not that time, Schmidt deal with the rebound. Full head of steam. Layup a little too strong. Schmidt deal continuing to struggle on offense. No field goals, just three points at the free throw line. Thompson was hounded, throws it away. Bears catch it on the run. Abby O'Brien. Didn't like the three there, Barber. Swish. Barber for three. And it's Heidi Barber who is giving the Bears a much needed source of mojo off the bench. Three triples, nine points. Ponies go high low. Buck Alden. The turnaround. Yes. Buck Alden. Stillwater. They've been getting a lot of those fadeaways to drop. And we have an official stoppage. Something happened to Abby O'Brien. Didn't see what it was. Could be winded. I don't see any laceration, but the officials, whatever they saw, Matt Olive, part of the crew, 
felt it was enough to stop play. They don't take safety lightly in this day and age. Eva Post, her three goes in and out. Buck Halton with the rebound. Ponies lead by 13. On the run, it's Dieterle. Back to Buck Halton, the kick out. Pepper for three. Bullseye. Pepper for three. The first field goal for Annika Pepper. Adebisi, the skip. The kick out, White Bear Lake looking for the answer, can't get it to drop, rebound is tipped to Bach Bachmeyer. Schmidt deal. Kicks back out, 2.02 to go. Out of BC again. Wallach, that bounced off a Stillwater player. Number five, Addison Post, number 40. Heidi Barber, golfing for White Bear Lake. Barber, found herself open. Barber storm. Unscripted, but she'll take it. She's got 11. As Schmidt deal gets a quick breather. 1.30 to go. Pepper out to Thompson. Stops near the high post. Now Buck Halton fires the three. Can't connect there. Offensive foul on the Bears. What's at stake? Seeding more or less, and the winner will be within striking range of East Ridge to potentially take the conference title. Whoever wins the Suburban East usually gets the one seed. That's been the case for the last several years as Section 44A doesn't change a whole lot. Stillwater tried to go back door. Carlin throws it right to Ava Post. Here's a chance for the Bears. Schmidt deal after a quick breather back out there. Wants to get the penetration. Ball poked away by the Ponies. Forty-one seconds on the clock. Barber, side fade, another three. This time looks a bit off. And Buck Halton tracked it down. Good thing she did. I think Pepper touched it. Now Stillwater can end the first half with the exclamation point. White Bear Lake again. They won the first meeting by seven. But these two have gone back and forth over the last several years. Eight seconds, Ponies stuck beyond the key, running out of time. Carlin, up and in! Lexi Carlin with a flare to end the first half. She's got 15. And the lone senior of the Ponies is galloping the home team to a 16-point advantage, 37-21. Tough shooting performance by the White Bear Lake starters. If they can correct that, they can work their way back in this game. But the first half belonged to Stillwater and a strong performance from the UMD-bound senior, Lexi Carlin. We'll rejoin you in a few minutes. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Stillwater leads White Bear Lake by 16. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. 
That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Second half moments away at the stable in Oak Park Heights. Mike Peden all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. No chaos for Stillwater though. They were looking fluid, polished, all of that as they lead 37-21 at the half. Lexi Carlin, a big reason for that with 15 points. Liana Buckhalton has seven. Peyton Schaefer with six off the bench. For White Bear Lake, Heidi Barber, the one player in rhythm, everyone else struggling to hit their shots. Barber has 11 off the bench. The rest of the team has 10. And Schmidt deal has yet to get a field goal. Bachmeyer out of BC Post, they've been limited. If they can turn that around, they have a good chance of constructing a comeback. And remember, if White Bear Lake gets the sweep, it would effectively guarantee them a two seed, which would mean hosting the first two rounds in section 4-4A. Of course, with the way these two have played, if Stillwater does hang on for the win, don't take that as a sign that they would beat White Bear Lake in a third meeting. Again, these two have gone back and forth the last couple of years. The Bears may not have the A-listers like some other 4A schools do, but they always bring it in postseason time and they have a strong coaching pedigree with Jeremy Post. They do get the stop there. White Bear Lake, They've been playing well enough. They just got to find a way to get the ball in the hoop. And that will be a dead ball rebound to the Bears as they try to get Schmidt deal involved. And sure, that might sound cliche. Of course you want to do that, but really shots just aren't falling. Barber doing a heck of a job to keep her team in this, but Let's see if the others can get involved. They tried the bounce pass to Schmidt deal. Buck Halton with the interception. Carlin with the handoff to Pepper. The lefty in the lane, harassed for a moment, kicks out three off the back iron, and a dead ball rebound to the ponies. The Suburban East with some solid teams in the mix. Stillwater, Eastridge, and White Bear Lake. Creighton Durham Hall slowly building their way back up after a few down years. They may need another year or two to build up their ranks. And we have an official's timeout. And I mean official's timeout. That's Matt Olive. It looked like he was favoring his left hand just before the second half started, and he may have suffered a cut. Has to get that taped up. We talk about athletic trainers and the value they bring to players. Well, it matters just as much for officials because without them, we can't have games. And there is a wet spot, a couple of them that are gonna get cleaned up as well. Matt Olive, I mentioned this before, longtime official, you'll see him at high school games, AAU tournaments, except on Mondays when he takes up his bowling leagues. Schmidt deal with the steal. Matt Olive with a couple of 300 games as a bowler. So any leagues out there, if you need a ringer to join your ranks, give Matt Olive a ring.
Wonder what would happen. We don't have the show anymore. If Bowling for Dollars was still a thing, I think Matt Olive would pick up a few. Out of BC, draws the foul, and that's something we didn't see a lot of out of White Bear Lake toward the end of the first half. Went for a lot of jump shots, not a lot of attacks. Her second. Adebisi, though, with a chance to pick up some points at the line. She had just two in the first half. Splits there, averaging 7.7 .7 a game. Carlin takes the entry fee, kicks it back out, Pepper for three. O'Brien may have gotten a piece of it. Schmidt deal, brings the ball up, doesn't have the numbers. She'll wait for help. Out of BC. Gets the post up on Carlin. Both teams 16 and three. Stillwater trying to go high low. Amy Thompson had to cut her way to position. She wasn't ready. Post to Adebisi. And Adebisi draws the push ball from behind. So White Bear Lake. Kicking a couple of opportunities here. Number 40, Heidi Barber in for the Bears. Heidi Barber goes in, she had 11 off the bench. Jeremy Post praised her utility when I talked to him before the game. Tries to go around the picket fence, ball knocked loose. Schmidt deal, found a lane, and goes back to the line. A little frustrated that she can't get it to drop, but this is getting the Bears to the line. And Amy Thompson has three fouls. White Bear Lake, this is where they can make a move. Another split for Schmidt deal, she's up to four. Still no field goals, but White Bear Lake inching closer, 37-25. High low, this time Stillwater completes the play. Elise Dieterle stuck underneath, Pepper stealing the inbound. A chance for the Ponies to drop a dagger of momentum on their side. Carlin, the step through, nowhere to go. O'Brien, through the lane, bounce pass to a wide open out of BC. And Blessing is getting a few plays, then Schmidt deal. Says right back at you, she steals the inbound, goes up, can't get the bounce. And Schmidt deal still without a field goal. This has gotta be frustrating for the junior who has had a wonderful junior season. She's not anywhere near the leaderboard in terms of scoring, but what she has done to anchor this White Bear Lake team is notable. That's a double dribble call. It looked like Addison Post lost the handle. 13.48 left in the second half. Both teams 16 and three. They trail Eastridge by just one win as far as the record goes. Schmidt deal, almost got a steal there. Number four, Candy Bachmeyer in four White Bear Lake. Eastridge at 17 and three, but more importantly for the Raptors, none of those losses have come in conference play. They've had some close ones. But Eastridge, much like these two, 
getting a lot more out of their players than you might expect. They may not have A-listers, but they have solid athletes. White Bear Lake gets another stop. Schmidt deal. Trying to play facilitator, three is short. And Jeremy Post didn't like how that play turned out. That was a quick three, too. You, you don't need to get them all back. Monica Pepper travels. I know you're down by 12, and you're trying to work your way back. Spillwater takes time out. But he's smiling again, trying to encourage his players. He's been around long enough to know that this game is far from over. 39-27, 13-13, timeout Stillwater. But to finish up what I was going to say, you don't need to try to force the issue at this stage of the game. If you need to get an extra pass in there or two, and let it play out. A few of the notes we wanted to share, Adebisi, the senior, Tried basketball for fun and also does volleyball and track at the school. But eight years later, here she is. Victoria out of BC. Also part of that line at White Bear Lake. But Schmidt deal, the top score and rebounder among White Bear Lake's returning contingent this year. Now O'Brien. That three looked a little off from the release. Carlin. Skips it to Buck Halton, finds Carlin again, a little give and go. And Carlin with her first bucket of the second half. Her big sister recovering from a broken jaw that sidelined her for a few games. And a foul is called on the ponies as they try to strip the ball from O'Brien. Just the first on Dieterle, but the ponies only have two to give. Worth keeping an eye on. As we make our way through the second half, Schmidt deal with a lot of coverage. Now gets the one-on-one. -on -one. Dead ball rebound to White Bear Lake. And Jordan, you can see the frustration, the annoyance. And she's not angry at anyone. Barber, touch three, no good. I think it's more of a bewilderment. This is part of the grind, though, that comes with high school hoops. How do you work your way through adversity? And Schmidt deal has had a hard time getting open compared to the first meeting, which I think plays a big part in the 41-27 score. Jeremy Post noted that just about everything went right for White Bear Lake in the first meeting. Schmidt deal snuck in at the last minute to disrupt Buck Halton's shot. Now the Bears in trouble as they face some Stillwater pressure. They do get it across. Barber wanted the side fade, couldn't get open. Schmidt deal. Sees Elaine. Throws up a prayer and it's answered. Another timeout. And Jeremy Post, I've seen him do this a couple of times now, and I'd like to point this out. He comes out and he does a fist bump, high five. He's doing what he can to keep the morale of his players up there. You like to see that. Schmidt deal finally gets her first field goal. I don't want to say it was a move of desperation, but given her performance thus far, you can certainly understand the eagerness to 
knock one in, but she does. 11.29 left in the second half. Schmidt Deal considers herself aggressive on defense. Blocks, steals, rebounds. She loves to pick those up. And this may be the first time, this is a segue, the smooth segue of the game, but I don't think I've ever heard Never Gonna Give You Up played by the pep band before. We don't have a video screen here, so I don't have to worry about getting rickrolled. 41-29 as the Ponies look to rickroll their way to a victory, get the split with White Bear Lake. High low for Carlin, broken up. But it will stay with Stillwater. Thompson moves in and will shoot two. Thompson, the leading score for the Ponies. Second foul on O'Brien. Thompson, a salad eater, and has done quite well in her time on varsity. Probably the biggest prospect coming out of the Ponies stable after Lizzie Holder, Amber Scalia, Sarah Scalia, and Liza Carlin moved their way through. Thompson makes both free throws. Alexis Pratt as well. Pratt, by the way, at St. Thomas, playing against the college she used to play for Omaha tonight. High low for the Bears, and now Schmidt deal. Has shaken off that rust. But it's still a 12 point game. Carlin, one on one, gets the space and hits another fadeaway. I talked with her mother beforehand. Lexi, they'd like to see her seize the initiative a little more often. Doesn't mind passing the ball, but she is a capable scorer, as we are seeing tonight. Loose ball, Pepper recovers. 10 minutes to go. Schmidt deal playing for the steal. Carlin again open down low, no good. So Schmidt deal takes the gamble, but it pays off for White Bear Lake anyway. Three in and out. Buck Halton. Carlin, one on one, kicks out. Repositions herself. Thompson in trouble. Ponies will reset. Buck Halton with the bounce pass, Carlin! Wubba, 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 woo, woo, woo. No look, reverse. Or if there was, it was a glance. There's a foul on Pepper, her second. 8.56 to go, and Lexi Carlin with her fourth 20-point game of the season. Lexi had a respectable game in the first meeting. That ball bounced right back to Adebisi. I thought it was gonna be a kick ball, but apparently it didn't touch anyone's foot. Adebisi finds a cutting Schmidt deal. And Jordan is coming around. She's up to 10, but does White Bear Lake have enough time? An illegal screen. 
White Bear Lake, and I've seen games like this throughout the season where the trailing teams play well enough to win. They just don't string together enough plays. White Bear Lake certainly getting their share of stops. But with Schmidt deal finally getting past that hump, I think she's hit her last three field goals. That could open things up for the Bears. Adebisi in trouble, finds Schmidt deal. He's trying to maneuver around Buckhalton, can't quite do it. And it will be a side out for the Bears. If you're watching this on the TSB Television YouTube channel, we will cover White Bear Lake's next game a week from Friday when they host Eastridge. Schmidt deal on the cut. Got her own miss that time. Well, that ends her streak of field goal makes, I believe, but she is fearless. Will not be denied. 7.55 left in the second half. And White Bear Lake in the bonus, so here's a chance. This is a shooting foul, so two free throws, but White Bear Lake. Can pick up some points at the line with the clock stopped. And Schmidt deal converts. Number 40, Heidi Barber. Six of eight from the free throw line. But White Bear Lake is still trailing by 12. They haven't been able to get on a run yet to make this a single digit game. Ava Post in for Schmidt deal, by the way. Jordan taking another quick breather. And I've noticed that substitution pattern of hers now where well, she'll get back in the game because Garland had nowhere to go. Ponies have to burn a timeout, but Schmidt deal, she takes a breather just to get a quick drink and then goes back out there. 7.33 to go, 47.35, Stillwater still in front. We've talked a lot about White Bear Lake, a few other notes with Lexi Carlin. We've discussed her a few times as well. She considers herself versatile. Played for the Metro Stars program last year. A team that had the Hopkins kids and Aguera, Kelly Boyle, and Liv McGill. Liana Buckhalton likes to run and weight train and play tennis for fun. And Carlin in the words of Tim Pepper, a go-to figure for the Ponies. Again, maybe not as dominant or as explosive as Liza was when you look at the stats she accumulated, but I say this all the time, there's more to this sport than what your record or stat line says. Ponies with two timeouts left, and they are in the penalty. Carlin for three. No good, Barbara with the rebound. This is the chance White Bear Lake was looking for. 7.08 to go. Can they make this a single digit game or at least get closer to it? Barber from 17, no good. Rebound Dieterle. Thompson, Carlin open for a minute. Kicks back out to Buck Halton. Schmidt deal, not giving her any space to work with. Another fade away for Lexi Carlin. Doesn't go in that time. Barber finds Schmidt deal. Tough angle there, and a dead ball rebound to the Ponies. 
number 14, Annie O'Brien, in for White Bear Lake. 47-35, 6.20 to go. A split here would shake up the section standings. If they want to catch Eastridge, they would need some help. Eastridge does get Stillwater and White Bear Lake again. Elise Dieterle with a brilliant cut inside to score the layup. Schmidt deal, drew the foul and got hit in the face. That's the fourth on Buck Halton. And more free throws for Jordan Schmidt deal. Not the sexiest way to score, but it does stop the clock again. And Schmidt deal, who didn't have a whole lot to beam about in the first half. Has 11 points in this frame, but conversely, Barber has yet to score. Stillwater doing a good job limiting her effectiveness. Not a lot of touches for Heidi. Thompson beat O'Brien and moves in for the layup. Barber. Couldn't get the three off in time. Dieter Lee got a piece of it. The Ponies not giving up that run. That could get White Bear Lake back in this game. High low from Dieter Lee to Carlin, overthrown. 5.09 left in this one. O'Brien out to Adebisi. Wants Schmidt deal and that didn't work out. Carlin, the kick out, 4.36 to go. Ponies don't have to force the issue here. Slings it to Thompson, who makes the one-handed catch and the layup. That could be the highlight of this one. Amy Thompson. Oh my goodness. That just might do it. O'Brien, wide open lane, easy pickings. That gets her on the board. White Bear Lake will call a timeout with 419 left. They still trail by 15. Amy Thompson, what a play. Now the Ponies, Holy Angels, their remaining non-conference opponent, but they have a big game with Eastridge on the 17th. That may or may not decide the one seed. It's gonna depend on how Eastridge fares outside of that matchup. Again, they're gonna to need to take a couple of losses for Stillwater, White Bear Lake, or anyone else to catch them, but it could set the scene heading into sections. Only seven in the group, so whoever gets the one seat would earn a first round by, although at this level, the first round usually is a foregone conclusion between the one and the eight anyway. 
But East Ridge, Stillwater, and White Bear Lake, they were in the thick of it last year. It was White Bear Lake as the three seed who pulled off the upset bid that got them all the way to a bronze medal. I'll never forget that section final and emotional Navia Hughes reflecting on one of the best moments of her life. And these two certainly in contention to do so this year, get their way to state that is. Even if Stillwater wins this round with a potential third meeting on the horizon. What we see tonight could change hanging into that next meeting. Schmidt deal. A for effort there, it didn't quite work out. But if White Bear Lake, if they have a little more touch in that third meeting, for example, that could change the equation. Stillwater lost to Eastridge in overtime in the first meeting. There really isn't a runaway favorite. Eastridge with the strongest resume, but Stillwater, they've come around after a couple of setbacks. Beating Rosemount, we've got a foul on White Bear Lake as the Ponies are content to play keep away here. They had a setback with Rochester Mayo, came back and beat Rosemount. He started the season with a win over Centennial. The only knock you really could throw at Stillwater would be the non-conference schedule, not playing as many high caliber teams as they have in the past. White Bear Lake did have a runaway loss to Wyzetta, but they weren't at full strength. And even in that game, Jordan Schmidt deal put in some work. Team foul. Adebisi hit with her fourth personal foul. Stillwater again in no hurry to force anything here. No shot clock. That will change next year, of course. Carlin colliding with Thompson there. But Stillwater hangs on to it. And this is a style of play you won't see as much of. Or you can hang on to the ball indefinitely. That's going to be a foul on the Bears. That's their last to give. Foul on the Bears, number four, Cammie Bachmeyer. Her second, sixth team foul. So not as many points in this meeting, but it's going to be a signature win for the Ponies. Barring something strange, and if that is the case, again, it gets them the split with White Bear Lake. Thompson with her fourth, but a lot would have to happen here. O'Brien. Now Bachmeyer, they're trying to get open for that three and are having a hard time doing it. Adebisi launches, no good. Schmidt deal, O'Board, and gets the friendly bounce. So Schmidt deal recovered nicely. Almost got the steal there, but will be called for the foul. Stillwater will go to the line. Schmidt deal recovered nicely, but I think the difference in the second half, no points for Heidi Barber. But this is a White Bear Lake team. That plays a lot of fundamentally sound basketball. And Stillwater 
Leaves it blank, but an offensive rebound will allow them to evaporate more time off the clock. Like we said, a split for White Bear Lake. Jump ball, White Bear Lake with the arrow. Makes the seeding discussions a little more interesting. It's the coaches who seed the sections, and obviously you can't seed yourself. But that could give pause over who gets two and three if neither are able to catch Eastridge. Tough pass for the Bears. And we're gonna have another jump. Stillwater with the arrow there. And again, that is significant because that would decide who would host the semis. It used to be semis and finals at Hastings, but more and more we've seen high seed hosting formats in sections, which I personally prefer. I think it creates a stronger incentive to go for that one seed, knowing the road to state runs through your terrain. But with the semis up for grabs, as Carlin will go to the line, that's significant because it will tell you who gets to host. Will it be Stillwater or White Bear Lake in that semifinal round? And if Stillwater can get some help from the rest of the conference, maybe they catch Eastridge that game February 17th. Will hold a lot of sway. So Lexi Carlin with a couple more points, a little icing on her cake. She was brilliant, extraordinary in the first half. Emanating a heavy helping of confidence with those fadeaway shots. Cooled off a bit in the second half, but didn't need to run up the score. Stillwater will hang on. And for White Bear Lake, If they meet Stillwater for a third time, they'll look to avoid a slow start in this series. Stillwater, and Stillwater calls a timeout, 15.9 on the clock. The this series seems to be defined by who gets the early jump. In the first meeting, it was White Bear Lake that had a big first half. And they held on to beat Stillwater. Tonight, it was Stillwater who got the jump. And they held off White Bear Lake, who just couldn't get enough going in their favor. What would a third meeting look like? We shall see. But these two, nine and 10 in the most recent 4A poll, QR half had them at eight and nine. So not far off. The Ponies, again, may not be front runners in the section compared, to, or in this class. Hopkins, YZ, that's usually a battle, and STMA, Chaska. There's some good teams up there. But that Providence one over Hopkins, I think, has to at least inject a pinch of confidence that the rest of the field might have a way to get them. A wire-to-wire -wire win for the Ponies. They led by 16 in the first half. And didn't look back. Ponies will use their last timeout. Inconsequential at this stage. So an extended pause with two seconds to go. But as coaches, You'll use every tool you have at your disposal to get your teammates out of a jam, whether it's a 15-point game or a one-point game. We'll try to get Lexi Carlin in the booth for a post-game chat. 
as the Ponies will go to 17 and three and earn the split. What that means in the section, we shall see. There are a lot of what ifs. Again, East Ridge, the standard bear. That's it, that's all. Stillwater wins 56-41. Bolstered by an incredible effort out of Lexi Carlin. 23 points, the lone senior on the team. One point shy of a season high, but that's all right. She set the tone and didn't let up. So Stillwater extends her win streak to five. White Bear Lake will try again a week from Friday when they host Eastridge. We'll be there for that one. You're watching High School Girls Basketball, Stillwater with a 56-41 win over White Bear Lake. I'm joined by Lexi Carlin, who scored a game-high 23 points, one off her season high, but that's all right. Lexi, you were really feeling it in the first half, hitting the fadeaways, really confident in your stroke tonight. Just what was your feeling, what was your mood going into this game? Um, well, we lost to them early in the season, and I think that like just built a lot of motivation going into this game. Um, and obviously this is a big team we also need to beat going into state as well if we want to make it to state. So there's always been a rivalry with us and White Bear and like, I don't know, we just, we really wanted this game more, I think. And that's why we won. What has your attitude been like this season? You're the only senior on the team. Of course, you watched your big sister and the Scalias, Alexis Pratt, a lot of big names have come through here. So you learn from a lot of talented players, but as the lone senior, how has that fed into your approach this year? Um, I definitely have to step up as a leader more with like a lot of our other girls graduated um, last year. Um, there's definitely a lot of young talent on this team. Like most of our team is sophomores. I'm the only senior, as you already said. And then there's like a couple juniors. So um, I definitely have to step up my leadership and kind of like tell like Peyton and Elise, like help them out because they'll be the future. Um, like Peyton will be my position next year and stuff. So. I don't know, I just have to step it up as a leader more, I guess. I'd say you did that tonight, and you've done a lot of stepping up this season. What have you learned as a player? Because I remember when you were coming off the bench, playing in stat padding time, more or less, and of course, as the players in front of you graduated and moved on to college, your big sister among them, you took on their roles. What have you learned throughout that process? Um, I think a lot of it for me has been like more of a mental game like obviously like when I was a freshman and Stillwater going to state a couple years like it's a lot to like kind of fill that role and like live up to that expectation and so I think a lot of it has been just confidence like building confidence over time I guess and um, putting up numbers in the gym that helps with confidence I guess but yeah it's I guess it's more of a mental game for me that has improved. <laughs> And as you noted, you wanted to get one back against White Bear Lake. Of course, you might meet again in sections, but what do you think getting a win says about this team's progression and their confidence in the final month of the regular season? Um, I think that is a huge like confidence boost for us, but I mean, come section time, like anyone can be anyone. Um, we can't like get too ahead of ourselves. I guess we just need to stay, stay grounded. Um, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was a good answer. Stay grounded. I do have to ask you, of course, uh, I've covered Stillwater for years, uh, and I called a lot of your big sisters' games. What are the family scrimmages like? I'm guessing you and Liza had some battles. Uh, who would you say would win in a one-on-one -on -one scenario? Uh, I, I can take Liza. I mean, she wouldn't like me saying that, but <laughs> I, think, I think, yeah, she'll beat me most of the time, but I'll still, I'll still be able to beat her sometimes. I don't know. I mean, I can probably drive around her but she could block me easily but I don't know <laughs> who's the better free throw shooter uh, me <laughs> yeah. 
Liza. You saw, you saw that. In the uh, well, uh, one of those Stillwater games. I don't think Liza would like to hear that. No. <laughs> uh, she might give me another death glare after yeah. this game. <laughs> She'll leave you alone, though, I presume. Mm, I don't know. No. Well, you two have been sisters for a long time, and I'm guessing, you know, tight knit. You're probably used to that by now. But uh, mm -hmm. she can come after me in ways she wouldn't uh, dare try against you. No. <laughs> No, I tease. All right. Well, we'll have to settle this free throw uh, battle at some point. But before we go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Uh, hi. <laughs> I don't know. Hi to my mom. Hi to my dad and my family and my sister if she's watching this. But I don't know if she is. And my grandparents. Yeah. I think with us giving her a shout out and kind of giving her a challenge, she probably will be watching this now. Yeah, she will. <laughs> Well, thanks for stopping by, Lexi. Congrats on the win, and we'll see if uh, we see you again come section time. Okay, thank you. Lexi Carlin, and that will do it. From Stillwater High School, for the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.